Hey YouTube family and friends, Rev, Rev It Up Car Fanatic Productions. We're in a 2011 Grand Cherokee Laredo 4x4. It's got the 3.6 liter motor in it. Just like the Cadillac SRS, STS, CD, TTS. And a uh, friend of mine complains uh, that when she's driving, when she hits the brakes, the front wheels start wobbling and she hearing some grinding noises from the rear. So we're test driving to see if we can uh, get it to vibrate when braking. That way we'll, we can determine whether it's the rotors that are warped. There's no check engine lights on. There's no ABS light, no traction control, no stability control. So I don't have any problems thinking it's a wheel bearing that's gone bad so we'll see if we can mimic the problem and verify that it does have a shake in the front end so far I'm, I haven't felt it at 40 miles an hour so let's get to a place where we can do at least 55 miles an hour and then brake and see if it uh, vibrates while driving at 55 miles an hour or 60 without any brakes then if it does that then it's not a brake issue it's going to be a front end component so I don't feel nothing at 55 and I'm hitting the brakes I don't I don't feel a wobble and I got up to 55. I heard a little road noise. I mean, it could be a bearing uh, that's starting to go bad. Because I I hear a little road noise when I got up to 55. So when I jack the tire up, we'll see if the wheel wiggles a little bit. Or if I spin it, see if we hear it sound like a, grand, a gritty sound. Like there's sand inside the bearings. Because it's supposed to run smooth. So... Let's get it up to 60 miles an hour here and see what we hear. All right, I'm at 60. I can feel it wibble, woggling in the right front. Now I hit the brakes. I don't feel too much hitting the brakes. So we're going to have to feel for a... Um, maybe a wheel bearing here and see if the wheel bearing is the issue and she may need brakes I know she need rear brakes the, the rotors in the rear are all scarred up so I'm quite sure she's going to need rear brakes and rotors and um, the outside of the rotors in the front looks good but it could be that inside pad a lot of times the sliding pin stick or the brake pad itself sticks because it's, it's dry don't have grease to lubricate it and it kind of gets stuck so we'll when I get back to the house um, we'll see what's going on here so I'm on the road where I can get back up to 45 miles an hour but I did hear a little noise when I was up to 55 miles an hour so uh, it wasn't a woo 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 woo, but it was noise definitely coming from the right front with a wiggle to it. So that's what she must have been complaining about. So, okay, let's get it back to the house and we'll check it and we'll talk to you later. Okay, I got my three ton jack and my three ton jack stands. I got it up in the air and I didn't see any informities in the tires to cause it to shake. Uh, there's no play in it. And when I spin it, it's regular. I don't hear any sand, but when I take the wheel off, I could do a better inspection um, of the hub and see if the hub would shake without the wheel. But what I do see, uh, right up in here, I see grease 
on the struts, meaning that this right front strut might be worn. Because on the driver's side, you can see that that is completely dry. So that strut could be bouncing around just a little bit and there's no deformities on that tire. So let me blow these tires off and check the brakes and everything. What I do notice is this outer tie rod, hear that? From side to side, it bangs up against the other side and that does it rather easily. Now, if I go to the other side, this is the passenger side, by the way. If I go to the driver's side, it doesn't do it. I can't get it to go to either side. So, I believe this is what's causing her problem at 55 miles an hour or 60 above, and you feel the, the shaking is, this outer tie rod is pretty bad. The ball joint looks good. This linkage looks good. And then the other problem I would suggest is that leaking strut. So <clears throat> anyway, let's get these tires off and check the brakes. And this is a good indication of the tie rod going bad. You can see grooves here on the, on the outside, but on the inside, you can't see the tire marks on that one. And the same on this side, the inside groove is eaten up and the outside on this one. The outside on the other one, it's not too, too bad, but you're supposed to be able to see those little grooves. So I think uh, new tie rods and uh, front end alignment would take care of that. And um, there's no need to, um, what you call it, rotate the tires because the right rear tire is worn back there. I can see that. The left rear tire, or the right rear tire is in excellent shape. The left rear isn't. So, there's no need to rotate tires. That's not going to help the situation. So, let's blow it apart. Okay, so I'm taking this, uh, the ABS sensor wire loose from here. It just pulls out so I don't uh, mess this up. I got a T55 Torx bit. I don't have the six point head that goes with it. So I have uh, Oh, I do six point But anyway, it takes the other kind but this one fits in there and this is to release the caliber From the caliber holder So I don't find any fault with the rotors. It's nice and smooth There's no lips on it there's no warps in it. I don't see no heat spots around it. And on the back side is the same thing. There's no grooves in here. This rotor is almost like it's in brand new condition. However, we do have rust here and rust here, rust here, and there's no oil on the brakes. But here are the brakes. And this is the wear line right there. So she's at the point where she can use new front brakes, but I wouldn't recommend rotors. Um, you can see the wear line is right there and it's just about to the wear line. So it's, it's not bad, but I would change them because this little scraper ring that rolls around the rotor lets you know it's time to change brakes. If you can get a close up of that, see how close it is. So within a few months, she's gonna need um, front brakes. So I'm gonna recommend front brakes. And let me show you again, the tie rod, the outer tie rod. Okay, here's the outer tie rod. Now, see? See how that, right there, metal on metal. I'm turning it too easy so I think that's where our problem is is the tie rods so 
I'm gonna go ahead and spray those down with lube just in case she wants to go with with tie rides which would be the smart thing to do so I'm gonna spray it down with my lube so they'll be ready to come off let me put my my towel or my car we're over to the driver's side and here is the tie rod on this end it's a bit more stiffer you don't hear it going side to side but we'll change them both if she would elect to so far the brake is looking good so this is the clip that you want to get off of here and you simply do it by just getting this tab out of here once you get the top tab off the back one the bottom one will come off i can't use one hand and do it once again i'm using the t55 torx to get the caliber bolts off one here and one here if we was doing the rotors then i would probably need a three quarter to get that off or a 19 millimeter one or the two to get the caliber brackets off but i believe this rotor looks good as well and again we took the um, ABS sensor off so we don't get that messed up and we got our caliper we're gonna lay it on the box over there as suspected the front rotors are in excellent shape there's no warpage there's not even a line look here my fingernail goes all the way across without getting stuck usually there'll be a groove and you, you get stuck in there there's no heat spots or anything and on the back side is is nice and smooth there's no roughness whatsoever no heat spots again we just got a bunch of rust, rust, and rust, and the brake pads, um, they're worn, again. Uh, just about to the line, to the limit, where it's about to change it. So, that's what I'm going to recommend. Two front brakes, and two tie rods, and I know she's going to need uh, rear brakes and calipers. If you can look, you can see all the scratches, and my fingers do get stuck on these rear ones, uh, especially this side. That side is really rough. You can hear that, my fingernail on that side. That's really rough. So, we're going to need to do rear brakes and rotors on this one, and you can hear my fingers scraping against those. And the difference... You don't you don't hear here none none so uh let's i'm gonna see how much uh the uh tie rods cost okay so i use my wire brush which is right here and i just got all the rust and stuff off where the rotor brakes are going to sit okay then you know, I can, let me get some brake cleaner. Uh, uh, spray around that, spray around there, get it all clean. Get the, the dirt off from when I sprayed on it. And uh, it dries up really fast. That's what I like about brake cleaner. That gets all the dirt. It gets all the dirt out. So then we want to take our brake cleaner, I mean our uh, brake grease, and we want to put brake grease inside here and out here. Same thing for the top, on the inside, and then out, because that's where the ears of the brakes are going to run at. And then we do the same thing for the inside. We want to get it there and come out and same thing for the top here want to get it in if I can show it to you and let it rub out in and out in and out okay and uh, now we're gonna wire brush that area right there on the uh, the rotors or should I say the calipers okay Here's our, our uh, brake fluid reservoir, which is right here. 
Okay, so now what I'm gonna to have to do is take a little bit of uh, brake fluid out of that. And um, when I go to push the piston in, it's gonna bring the brake fluid out through here. So that's up to the top. Let me take some of this out. I do have dot three, but let me suck some of this out. So that's the importance of watching your brake fluid because when you're using the dual piston, you're pushing the pistons back in the bore and brake fluid is going up into the reservoir and you don't want the reservoir to overflow because that air will come out. So every now and then I go up there and see how it looks up there and you just take your time and, and press it in. This is a dual piston joint and I can step up and look as I'm doing it and watch and see how far the fluid is going up. And so far we're looking good. And I think I got enough room to get to the end because we're almost there. Yep, we're right there now. As far as she go, and if I remove the cap, we still got plenty in there. So when I get the front brakes done, I'm gonna pump the brakes and the fluid's gonna go back up into the reservoir. And then uh, when I get to the back brakes, then um, fluid's gonna go back up in there also. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. So now we're gonna flip this down and get the tool off of here. Okay, take the tool out, take the brake out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the inside of this with a wire brush. We're gonna put lube around here, lube around here, lube that, lube that, lube that, and we're gonna lube our sliding pins. So we'll be right back. So the sun is a little bright. So I'm gonna see if I can get in here, show you what we do. We uh, lubricate around the metal part of the piston here. We wanna lubricate this one. Every place the brake pads touch, we wanna lubricate that. Okay. Make sure that's lubed. And then now we want to lube the ends here and here and here. Okay, now we're going to lube the sliding pins. You get a sliding pin out and it comes out. And all you do is just put lube on it. I can't do it with one hand, so. So we just lube the sliding pin and take our hands and put it in the back of it. And we're gonna slide it right back in the boot and then make sure it slips in and out. And that's how you do it. And then you just take the other one out and then you lube that one up as well. It's very important when you lube them up that you keep the sliding pins back or else when it, you go to put the calendar back on, it's gonna be in the way and you won't be able to tighten them up so you got to get them back so it can fit over the brakes and then you can tighten them down so now let's get the other brake out this is the inner brake pad which clings to the uh, piston so you want to put grease around here and that helps it slide in easier And then of course, um, I still always grease the edges of this. The more grease this thing has, the happier it'll be. And the less you'll get a squeal, squealing noise from your customer having got brand new brake pads and having got rotors and stuff. You don't have to worry about all that. You'll be good to go when it comes to that area. So now what we do You got to make sure you have the right orientation of, of it, which is simple, because you can only go one way, which is that way, because the ears are gonna go onto the tangs here on the, on the inside. So you wanna take it, fit them in there, 
Sometimes it takes two hands to push it, man. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna need two hands. Best way I found to do this is turn this way, have your left hand here and your right hand here, and with both of them, you push it on and the pad slides on. And the other pad with the, um, the wear ring right here faces this way and it goes in like that. So I'm gonna put some lube around here, lube around here, and then just slide that right in there. Like I said, that just slides on right in between the groove there. And with that lube on there, these would be happy. Now, this, make sure the line isn't twisted. Flip it up, and these right here will set down in the groove inside here. And then you'll screw your sliding pins into the back of the caliber holder. And then we'll show you how to put the dust cap on and the clips here. So we got the dust caps on and I'm gonna use my ratchet tool to get them wind in. And you can feel it go in. You wanna kinda of do them evenly. Sorry about that. Still going in. And, it, and it's in. Both sides are in, about equal. Now I'm gonna turn the steering wheel and then I'm gonna torque these. I think they go to 48 foot pounds. If you were doing the caliber bracket bolts, those would be 150, I think, 140, 150, one of the two. But double check that, don't take my word for it. Since we have the rotor back on, we can go ahead and put this, uh, ABS clip back in place. Now I'm gonna turn the wheel towards me so I can get that tightened down good. And the dust caps, I always take and put a little bit of brake lube in there and put it in there so it can stay nice and moist. And we wanna get that bottom cap right down there. Get that one in. And as you can see, we got plenty of room or the brakes. They should slide it in and out. They work properly. Properly. So the next thing we want to do is turn the wheel back towards us. And then we want to get this spring back in. And the best way to get this spring back in is to get those behind here. Like this you want those in the spot where it goes like this here and then you want to push see if I get it with one hand push in like that there you go and now it's locked in see anti rattle so I did it with one hand so you just want to make sure you get these lined up and get these behind it ears here and then push straight in and those will go in and now that's locked in place so now we got our rotors done I want to clean up we got our brakes done I'm gonna clean up the rotors a little bit for a little W I mean W I mean, um, brake clean on it make sure there's no dust on it and uh, I'll get the inside one uh, right about there I know the inside one is clean anyway but uh, that's how you do the back brake if you want to straighten out the wheel lock it in the front and we're going to tackle the um the right front tie rod because the left one it won't be until after three but the right one is the one that's the problem so i can get that right one on and get the rotors and the drums in the back done and if my tie rod hadn't got here we can take this for a ride because it's the right side that was wiggling and if that wiggling is gone and we know we solved the problem and we'll just wait on that other part to come for the left front in a tie rod or the right front in the tie rod out of tie rod we made sure our steering wheel was turned straight and we're looking at the angles and they look pretty good so what we got to do here loosen up this bolt then we're going to take a hammer and bang here and that should pop loose but before we do that we want to put a wrench on this and we want to loosen it get that once we get that loose we want to um 
get this loose, get that off, and then we want to count the number of rotations as it takes to take this tie rod out. And then when we put the tie rod back in, we want to count that number of rotations to put it back in. That way we get it close to the way it was when it brought it here and they'll be able to drive to the shop to get the front end alignment. And that goes for the other side as well. So I always do a visual look at the tires or the, the uh, rotors and see how they look. And they look about the same. So I know the steering, both wheels are up in the air. The steering wheel is not gonna lock. So I got a bungee cord and it goes underneath the seat to make sure the steering wheel stays centered while I'm doing this. Okay, it was an inch and an eighth to get this loose and I had to put grip pliers to hold that, to back that screw off. And this is a uh, 21 millimeter and I use my um, impact to get it off. Now I'm gonna take a hammer and beat it here. And I left this here at the top so I can tap down on this if I need to. So I'm gonna get about a five pound mallet, put on my headphones and hit this until that comes loose. Okay, I want you to see you guys. I have my headphones on and I banged here already loose so we got that loose so we're going to take this bolt off well we'll get that bolt off and then we're gonna twist this and how many revolutions we get. I'm gonna write it down over there and the new one, I'm gonna put it on the same one. Now the new one's on and you see I can barely turn it with my hand. I gotta use force. <clears throat> and I use force to turn it. That's how that should be. So this is gonna ride much better. We got the brake clip in, we tightened up our caliper bolts. We got the uh, caps back in. We greased the sliding pins. We greased the ears. Now we're going to put the tire back on this side. And we're going to do the rear brakes. And we're going to wait for that left side um, tie rod to come in. The back ones are a little bit different. They got the caps. Only the back ones here. You need a T45 to get the back ones. Instead of the, the T55 we have for the front ones. And uh, we push the sliding pins all the way out. And uh, we're gonna have to loosen this here up. Again, this clip is easy. Just pretty much get get one of them out and it uh, automatically, just uh, the other one will automatically come out. It's hard to explain it. There you go, they're out. And then you just wiggle it and you got it made. You got them out like that, okay? Now, there's a perfect example. This one is shot. That's why this rotor's got so many grooves in it. See the uh, pin right there? That pin right there? And we put the brake back inside. See that? Barely enough room. The, this, this, that made that rotor shot. The inner pad, it's got more pad on it. Uh, but it's, it's halfway worn of these sliding pins I can't even push them really they were hard to get in so we're gonna have to take the uh, brake rotor off I mean the um, caliper holder off and I think that's gonna be three-quarter bolt maybe we'll see and especially on this right here right around here there's a, a rubber ring we're gonna have to get that ring off or else you'll never get this rotor off that's what's missing on the front the front didn't have them but you gotta use a pick and get up under here because we're gonna reuse this to seal this. This keeps dirt from getting out of here. So let me get the brake calibers off. We're gonna clean those up and then take a hammer, put my headphones on, and we're gonna beat and beat and beat until that comes out of there. So this is the little rubber seal I was talking about. We're gonna reuse this. If you don't get this out of here, you'll never get that rotor off. So that's got to come off and go right back on there. So we're gonna set that aside put our pick tool right there and we're going to get the uh, bolts off for the caliber bracket now.
Hey YouTube family, friends, Rev, Revin Up Car Fanatic Productions. I want to apologize. I didn't get to finish showing you the rear brakes on that 2011 uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo yesterday. Uh, my battery died. But anyway, um, it's standard procedure how I take off rotors. Um, that particular one, um, I put a screwdriver between the rotor and the backing plate and I had a five pound hammer with my headphones on and I banged against the rotor and I spent it, put my screwdriver in no location, banged on the rotor and it comes off. And then of course I get my wire wheel and I clean around the hub and around the uh, lug nut and um, get all that rust and dirt out of there. And then, you know, I put never sees around there and of course how we lube the brakes up we lube the um sliding pins the ears of the brakes and the brakes in the back were pretty much like the front but they were just smaller um it had little three rings on it that you click that one into the rotor and I mean into the um uh the, the brake caliber and the other one with the pin the wear ring goes face upwards and goes on, and then you put the caliper on, and you put the sliding pins in, you lock them down, put the tire on, you're good to go. So we did all four. We did two rotors and brakes in the rear. We did brakes in the front, and we did get the left and front outer tire rides put on, and we had the um, alignment just as it was when she brought it to me. So it's, she wouldn't even notice the difference, but she's gonna get four new tires and uh, get a front end alignment. But she's good to go. I test drove it. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And again, we apologize for not being able to show you that part of the rear brakes. God bless and have a wonderful day.